The Cape continues at its regular day and time. 9, 8 central. How's that knee? You again. And this season... You're the start of something new. Something good, I hope. New villains. This guy's left a trail of bodies from Berlin to Moscow. I'm here for my cape. New discoveries. That guy on TV, they say he done it. He wasn't Jess. And more danger. You like the danger, don't you? Then you can throw a cape at <laughs> Putting him back in his cage. Let's play. The Cape continues next Monday, 9, 8 central on NBC. Welcome to Cancelled. We are back uh, at the wonderful Permanent Record Studios. Cancelled is produced by... Producer extraordinaire Mike Moody at Permanent Record Studios here in Austin, Texas. Uh, we are three and four episodes into superhero nonsense, the cape. <laughs> um, that's Mike McCray here. Barely put, yeah. Mike, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm, uh, I'm all right. We both had eggs we this did. morning. We did, we talked about that. <laughs> we've been having a very exciting conversation about eggs. Uh, how's things? What's going on with you? Uh, things are good. Nothing terribly special going on. Busy weekend of shows. And uh, and then I got to watch The Cape. <laughs> okay. Three and four. We'll, jump into, we'll just jump into it because I do have a fair amount to talk about this show. Where are you? Did Has it grown on you? Do you like it? Did you like these episodes more or less? I wouldn't say it's like grown on me per se but i've like acclimated to it it's like to the point where like like the first two i was just so disoriented by the whole thing now it's like okay i like their premise has been established more or less mm. and i can follow it and I, like i said yeah like i i find myself slightly wanting to know how it's going to end okay well that's a start yeah, i feel like sure. comparatively i don't think you gave a shit at all last week how anything ended so yeah i was more interested in the sort of <laughs> like bundle of flaws that which i mean let's not pretend that there aren't continuing to be a bundle of flaws <laughs> not the least of which is this child refusing to recognize his dad oh they <laughs> the, oh i'll tell you what yeah this whole premise of like people not being able to recognize people in masks yeah is taken to the next level in these episodes not only can you not recognize people in masks Vincent Faraday, arguably the most famous criminal in this city, dead but all over the news, right, is just in public with no mask on all the time. Just, just during the, the day, just oh, with a baseball right, yeah. hat. That's the only a bit hood, of a hoodie yeah. and a baseball hat no one can fucking tell. And even is. when he is, in, it's like a Lone Ranger mask that he's wearing around. <laughs> like it's not... uh, episode three is, uh, I think it's called Cosmo. They are doing a mildly fun thing where it's like villain of the week. There's like overarching story, but then yeah. they're kind of bringing in like whatever the They're inventing their own little rogues gallery. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and this one is Cosmo, which actually gives us some tie-in to like Max Malini's past. I, they are, they're trying. I will give this show this. They are trying. I wish they would cut out I know they're trying to give the uh, the wife more to do, mm -hmm. but it is boring. Oh, it's and yeah. I don't care. I don't need her like what like she's working in an office. Yeah, like, exactly. She's on. a fucking public defender. I don't give a shit. <laughs> right. And then even when she like in this episode, she like kind of starts realizing maybe there's more to the fair the thing with her husband. Like there's a witness. She she so uh, the arc is rounding up. They're just arresting everybody in the city and putting you in jail if you get caught for public urination or whatever. Uh, arrest rates have gone up 200%, all this shit. So she's interviewing some guy who's like a homeless guy that lived in the train yards. And she's, he's telling them, oh, we all saw what happened. There was a bunch of us that lived down in the train yards. We all know that that guy is being set up. Blah, yeah. Blah. Of course, she goes to who she thinks is a friend, the husband's ex-partner, who's bad. And he's gonna he obviously covers it up. And then that's it, though. Like, she doesn't continue to push that issue. As soon as she no. finds the guy's like, we looked into it, there was nothing there. And she's like, oh, well, I guess, I guess he's crazy. There you go. Well, so much for that B plot. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then somebody slides a thing under the door with like pictures of them arresting all the people at the train tracks or whatever. But then the next episode, 
It is not addressed. Her only storyline is that she was trying to bring cake home to her kid and it <laughs> melted. Like, that's it. Right. Yeah, so that kind of annoyed me. But I did like this. So this episode starts with somebody named Gregor or something or other. Yeah, can please I? continue, please. So, yeah, this character, uh, his name is Gregor Molotov. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know how writer's rooms work. And I'm like, did they have literally five seconds to come up with a Russian name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First name, first name, first draft. It's done. We're picking it. And then also beyond that, the problem is he's German. This man clearly has a German or Austrian accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then even when they're drinking and they pour him a shot, he goes, Prost. That's German. <laughs> like they, they gave they make him Russian and German at the same time because I guess those are the same. I don't know. I mean, they're close enough. Uh, well, but also I like that his uh, – so they, we see him being put into this prison and they're talking about how like you can't – you escape everything, the great Gregor, but you'll never escape <laughs> this place or whatever. Uh, of course, he immediately escapes, kills like 20 people, sure. which I think is fun. Like I do think this show is fun where they're like – Mass casualties. Yeah, there's, there's a, a lot, lot of a lot thing. of people die on what would normally you would think kind of be a fin like an otherwise family friendly show. Right, Very yeah, campy yeah. superhero shit. Everything else is pretty generally. Like, you could just watch with your kids, except somebody, like, multiple people get their throat slit very graphically <laughs> right. in this episode. Um, so they come back. Everybody's dead. They're like they because they've searched him. They check his throat and his eyes and everything to make sure he's got enough hiding anything for him to get out of this prison. But they find what appears to be a tooth that's like carved into a key or fake yeah. a fake tooth that's in the shape of a key that he used to like get out of the handcuffs or something. Uh, and then there's like some small tunnel that he's escaped from. They're like he'd have had to uh, dislocate every bone in his body to fit through there. And then he's. He's written in blood Cosmo on the wall. And I was like, what if the bad guy was just evil Kramer? It was just, <laughs> it's just post N word Kramer is the villain of this fucking show. <laughs> oh, I'll get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> what we find out is Cosmo is an old student of uh, Max Malini. And Cosmo is actually. Because uh, he's referred to Cosmo previously as a guy who had the cape, and he's from the 1800s or whatever. But Cosmo is just the Dread Pirate Roberts, right? He's it's like just, a title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the Dalai Lama. <laughs> it's just passed along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from person to person. And he was a Cosmo at one point, but he's taken the cape. He's given it to Vince, and now Gregor's back for his cape. So that sets up. There's that sort sets of this up that's kind of the main story. Sort of like a Henry and Ribsy situation <laughs> with this cape. <laughs> Where, that's a hell of a reference for like the four of us that are going to get I that. I was hoping you would know that. But that's what it is. He's gotten all attached to this cape now. And then now here comes this so-called original owner who wants right. it back. So how do we and I would also, do that? But they, they are imbuing this cape with like – Soul possessing powers. They keep saying horseshitly written lines, by the way. At one point, Max says, like, just remember, either you wear the cape or the cape wears you. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean it. That's not a. You can't. The cape can't no. wear you. You're. A, it's just a dumb. That's well, just some fucking in, in Russia cape wear right, you. That's no, all that is. That is. But, and if it looks like you said last week, you're like. Is this cape sentient? Like, I can't tell. I know. It, they keep getting close to but that. But then I would also like to add, they will then describe actions of the cape that are not. So So at one point later on, we can jump around, but towards the end, Cosmo has held the Carnival of Carnage or whatever the fucking name is. Carnival of Crime <laughs> hostage. Carnival of Carnage, I believe, is an insane clown posse album. Not making, <laughs> not making that up. Uh, so he's like holding them hostage because he wants uh, Faraday to show up with the cape because he wants his cape back. And he's got Max in a water tank, like a Houdini thing. And he's going to drown and the rest of them are tied up and get eaten by a tiger. Vince, of course, shows up. He, say, he rescues people, but then there's the fight. And what I, first off, he gets that cape Gregor gets the cape immediately. Yoink. The first <laughs> yeah. thing that happens is he knocks over the water, like uh, uh, the cape knocks over the water thing. So Max comes out. He runs up to go. Well, Max, are you okay? And the guy just takes the cape off his back. Yeah. immediately that quick. But he starts saying shit like, "Now you'll see what the cape is capable of in the hands of a true master." And then he just does shit that Vincent's already right. Done yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, just yeah. like grabs a guy and throws him. Or the first thing he does is smash a light bulb. 
I'm not impressed. Like, I, I watched our guy rip a car door off. I was expecting some ins- awesome shit to happen yeah. for that very reason. Like, oh, okay, we're going to okay, see, see how, new yeah, yeah. tape shit. No. Nope, not even a little bit. And at one point he says, like, he, I wrote it down. What's the exact line? Because it's fucking dumb. He says, uh, um, where is it? He says, uh, see, the, see, the, see how the cape is like an extension of my body? I flex a muscle and the cape constricts. That's just how the cape works. That's literally just <laughs> right. the mechanics of the cape that we have seen for three episodes at this point. That is not anything special. Uh, um, I will also say there's another line that I found real dumb. I enjoy about this cape uh, earlier. So uh, Orwell and the cape have kind of gotten in a little to have a little bit of an argument going because the cape because uh, Vincent went a little overboard in questioning some art cop that she was like you were just going to ask him some questions which is really all he did he dangled him off the side of a bridge or whatever but who cares uh, so they're having this argument and she's like and what about this. Uh, uh, Gregor or whatever. She goes, he's a psychopath and a murderer. He's left a trail of bodies from Germany, from Berlin to Moscow, uh, and his weapon of choice was the cape. And I'm like, how do the police know that? Is, that, is there a coroner somewhere going like, <laughs> oh, you can see clearly there's fresh cape wounds on this body. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, it's so dumb. Also, that's a very specific corridor of murder. Yeah. Like, it's not around the world, world just specifically the, between Berlin and Moscow. Two, there's, there's one train that goes <laughs> right. between those two places. Don't take that train. That guy might be on it. <laughs> uh, I also don't know how long the cape is. There's no sort of, like, yeah. delineation. Because at one point, he like like he's dangling some of that guy off the bridge. It seems to be 30 feet fucking long. Yeah. I just can't get a handle on that cape at all. The thing I liked about that, so, yeah, that the, the scene, the first scene or sequence in the in the episode three is, like, he's hunting down, uh, you know, one of these crooked Lee, cops. I would like to add, real quick, and I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah, yeah. but the very first thing we see is him go investigate the train car where they took him yeah, for yeah, clues, yeah. ostensibly. <laughs> right. That was, like... A month ago, yeah, 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 yeah. What else? Just showing up looking for clues. <laughs> like, there's nobody. There's no chain of evidence. There's no fucking police tape. That thing is just homeless people <laughs> living there. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. I just that, uh, anyway. So continue. I'm sorry. Uh, but, that yeah, just really annoyed me. So anyway, he gets this guy and like he's you know he jumps on the car at this truck. The truck stops and then what he does is he takes the cape and he goes. Whoosh, the cape rips the door, the car door off. off of the car, right. and then the guy shoots at him, and he takes the – he uses, again, the metal car door as right. a shield right. with the cape. Okay, so that's what the cape can do, and then that's what this guy can do with the cape. Right. A few scenes later, he's at home or whatever – Practicing with the cape by just knocking heads off mannequins. Yeah, but me- he- also heads that are four feet away. They're in right. a very small room. Like, you're not, okay, wait, you can do this, but this is how you practice. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, the, like, practicing should be doing something harder sure. than you can already, already do. Already achieve, for sure. Just again, it's just like the whole thing with the cape and what it can do is just very ill defined. Well, there's also, there's just shit that's ill defined. Like, uh, another example of, I guess, poor writing or what have you. Uh, so the other the the B storyline with the family is that the kid is being uh, starting a new school. Yeah, the son is yeah. starting a new school. It's his first day at the new school, and the teacher's like, "I'd like to introduce you to Trip Faraday. I think you're all going to want to be friends, be nice to him, whatever." He opens up his desk, and there's a bunch of chess pieces in it, and everyone's laughing at him because they all say, "Oh, you're that's like, chess." That's a cold ass kid. So one cold ass kids. Two. How did they know to bring those right. chess pieces? The, <laughs> yeah. the teacher's clearly introducing him in this moment. I, I remember new kids showing up at school. They never were like, hey, in a couple of days, somebody's coming. Right. They just tell you when he shows up. Right. So they just planned ahead. Also, later on, they write in his book, uh, Return to Murderer Kid, which is just like – but it's written like fucking uh, Toys R Us letters, like that R is <laughs> right. backwards yeah, and shit. Yeah, that. It really made me laugh. Uh, <laughs> So he's getting in fights at school because they're picking on him for being the son of uh, chess or whatever. So that's happening. Uh And we basically just have the Cosmo uh, uh, chess confrontation that's going to happen eventually. He's following Cosmo. Cosmo's doing like – he's like reading Orwell's palms. Oh, the other thing that happens, which I actually think was good – 
like needed to happen at least was uh, Orwell is brought into the carnival of crime. Like they're no longer yeah, yeah separate. Right, right. She's not part of the carnival, but like she shows up there. They introduce her. They show her around. By virtue of, of being hot, it seemed like oh, is how like Keith yeah, yeah, David's yeah, yeah. like, well, who is this? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, she has to. So the what <laughs> it is very convoluted how they get there, but the cops. So Ark kind of catches a, a whiff of Orwell because she had to stay too long when uh, Faraday's dangling a dude off the side of the bridge, right? So she had to, like, burn her hideout. So she needs a place to stay, so she's staying at Faraday's until she can get set up somewhere else. Uh, he says, we, I got this little guy that comes through. He doesn't really knock, so if he shows up, just I don't tell him, whatever. So he shows up, and it's immediately like, oh, hey, what's going on? Like, he just starts hitting on her and like, why don't you come <laughs> back to the carnival? We've got a show tonight. Which also, I kind of really love that the Carnival of Crime is also an active carnival. Yeah, I know. They just say I have, like, an actual like, show. Like, this seems dangerous. I don't think you should, you should do one or the other. They rob a train of, like, bags and bags and bags of cash in the next episode. Do they really need, like, 50 people's tickets to this fucking show that bad? Yeah, right. I, I would retire from Carnival. Oh. From like the pirate, from like the tiger aspect of things. Like it's just, who's taking care of that tiger? Right. We, we, first time we see a tiger. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, they're, uh, again, they're, they're bumbling towards a big reveal in mm-hmm. these episodes with the grace of want- a drunken <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> Do we want to discuss? Are we talk- I'm assuming we're talking about the same thing, right? Yes. Uh, which is so dumb. So um, we, we get a little bit of a fight between – not a fight, but an argument between Orwell and, uh, and the Cape. And Faraday says, like, well, who even are you? She's like, I'm, I'm supposed to, he's like, I'm supposed to trust you. Who even are you? Like, what's your real name? Where'd you go to school? Who's paying for all this fucking computer yeah, yeah, yeah. shit? Which I was like, okay, I actually like that you asked that question because I am curious. Like, where, I also like, where did you go to school is the second question. Yeah, a little weird. It's like, is this a St. It's like where I'm from in St. Louis. To everyone asks what your high yeah, school yeah, is. Yeah, is yeah, that yeah, what it was? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but she, he's like, where are you getting all these fancy cars? Completely legitimate question. Uh, she's hinting at her past, like, you don't want to know about my past or whatever. We get the most ham-fisted fucking moment where, for out of fucking nowhere, Fleming is just in his office and he's talking to somebody on the phone and he, she's like, well, we have, or like a video conference or whatever. And she's like, uh, she's, you know, there's been uh, hints of her in Europe and whatever. Um, you know, and it, we don't know who they're talking about, just a her. And uh, he's like, we can get prints off of something. And he goes, I think a father would recognize his daughter if you show me a picture. And I'm like, oh, well, then you're Orwell's father. Right. Like, what? <laughs> no. This is not – this is another moment of, like, pulling the hood back on Faraday to not I, – yeah, I know who you are. I can yeah, see this. your dumb face. <laughs> Yeah, it's so ham fist. You know, keep, even if they had made those two scenes a little further apart in the show, it yeah, might have been a little. They didn't come back, but to they were back. back to back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, I get it. And then he tries. He like opens this little ke- chest, and it's gonna, it's like gonna be a reveal. There's gonna be a picture or something in it. But he like it gets interrupted. and He just closes it real quick. You don't see what's in it. We're like, right. all right, yeah, I gotcha. So yeah, you're, I forgot about that. That is absolutely happening, and I find it very annoying. <laughs> um, there's a lot of moments too where just like. And again, it sounds like I'm shitting on the show. I had a lot of fun watching these two episodes. They're like I said, they're dumb, they are messy, but like I used to watch a lot of like uh like not so much Hercules, but like like the Highlander the TV show. I love or that like show. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. fucking Renegade. Just like yeah. low stakes dumb TV. And that's exactly what this is. Yeah. But maybe a slightly bigger budget. Yeah. And Keith David. Well, who doesn't like Keith David? Fucking one of the and also, I mean, I think, you know, he was the in something about Mary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was the stepdad, mm-hmm. like he of of the d- yeah, date yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, he's the beans over to Frank's. He's that guy. Yeah, yeah. And just like I remember the funniest thing about that movie, I didn't really know who he was or whatever, but just like the contempt with which he looked at Ben Stiller, <laughs> like just hilarious with a look. I remember yeah, yeah, how yeah, yeah. funny that was. Like how. Just how much hate he is <laughs> for that character. Uh, so uh, Vince is following Gregor around at one point, and oh, uh, right. Gregor gives him the slip. Gregor gives him the slip by like 
Because first off, he's walking around dressed like Carmen San Diego for some reason. He has like a trench coat and a big floppy hat. That's right. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> and uh, they go around a corner, and then he's just giving his coat and hat to somebody else. A very cl- classic fucking uh, misdirection or whatever. But then he goes, he goes and plays poker because he's trying to figure out. He's like, I've heard tales of somebody in town with a magical cape, and he's trying to find who has this fucking cape. He hasn't figured out it's Faraday yet or whatever. And uh, they're playing poker. He's playing. He's just randomly playing poker yeah. with these two. I don't know where. Does not establish that at all. Well, it says the, casino. So there's... there's a big sign outside that says casino, but then it's just a, a like warehouse room with two other guys in it. Like there's they're in a weird like movies and TV do this sometimes where they're just sort of like a like a, a set or a state that that you would just call the underworld yeah. of the city. It's <laughs> yeah, like yeah, this yeah, series yeah, of yeah, connected alleys yeah. that's sort of a bazaar right. and all these rooms that lead into weird A lot of neon things. reflected in puddles. By the way, have, you, no seen, distinct have you seen buildings. John Wick 3 yet? No, I was just okay. talking. I've never seen those movies. So oh, now I think I'm just going to enjoy. You're going to love them. I think, great. yeah, everyone loves them. Uh, this I'm always like This isn't a movies. spoiler of any real note, but at one point, and then we just watched it last night, uh, at one point, he's like running down an alley. He It's in Chinatown. He runs to through like some uh, like sh- some place selling chandeliers or whatever, up some back stairs into a room, and then that room is just some sort of like antique armament storage facility. <laughs> There's just a bunch of glass cases with knives, a bunch of old guns. It's just like why was that connected to the chandeliers? That's always, like, and that's very much what you're describing of like this weird kind of underground. often in movies. It's a it's a Chinatown. Seriously, mm-hmm. like that's kind of like one of the motifs yeah, yeah. they have for. But they all sort of function the same way in these things like. It's indistinct what anything anything can be in there. Right. Yeah, uh, exactly. But, and that's where – so there's also this weird poker game where he uh, flits three men's throats with playing cards and like – graphically like you yeah. see like oh, the throat open up like it's it's yeah. blo- it's like violent it's and it's such a tonal shift from the rest of the show because the rest of it is a guy with a cape right throwing people around in a very cartoonishly funny way and then all of a sudden there's just like moments of real violence it's very weird uh i do like how much rallo the little person is just like a caricature character like he's just oh yeah he's just like he's fu- he's he beats people up or whatever because he's strong but then also like he's just like the horny guy so <laughs> at one point they're t- he's so at, at the end he's tied up with the indian mystic and maybe one other person maybe the woman who like the knife thrower or whatever and uh they're like the tigers holding him at bay they're all tied up and uh Orwell runs over and unties them right before the tiger can get to him, and he's just like, see, she loves me, I told you. And it's like, that is such a classically dumb TV line that I just like, yeah, perfect, that fits. I like your little dumb character. They all, yeah, for some reason, everyone wants to make little people really horny in their movies. <laughs> that just too. seems oh, like... But I like they also make him horny and extremely murderous. Oh, yeah. uh, so they knock, he... Uh, surprise, surprise, Faraday gets the best of uh, the Gregor, and he's laying there unconscious. And as soon as fucking Rollo gets untied, he just goes, let's throw him in the river. Like, very excited. <laughs> he's very right. excited. And I'm like, I like how much he wants to kill people all the time. I enjoyed that. But also, he then beats – that fight is very anticlimactic because – he so uh, Faraday shows up, knocks him over for a second, frees everybody, but then he grabs the cape and he goes off on his little. I'm meant to have the cape and blah blah blah. He's like, uh, uh, he's show. Me, I'll show you what you can do. He does nothing new. Vincent grabs a hold of the cape and is getting like pulled in towards him. He's like, see how I constrict my muscles, and then he just manages to wrap the cape around Gregor's neck, and I guess Gregor like suffocates himself or something. I guess which is dumb because like you're a master of the cape. You would, just, would you just let go? I don't understand. Yeah. Well, I was – once that Henry and Ribsy thing got in my head when I was watching and pl- that plus I was sort of wondering like, is this cape sentient? There was a moment there where I was like, is the cape Doing going the- to choose? <laughs> is that what they're going to do here? I wouldn't – I wouldn't put it past the show based on what I'd seen so far. I absolutely would not put it past the show. It also almost would have made more sense. This show makes a little more sense if the cape is imbued with some sort of supernatural power. Because as it is now, it is just like they, – he. They, it's like it's weighted and it's made out of spider silk. That is not enough to explain the things this cape can do. No. But if there is some sort of a man sold his soul to have the most like magical thing or whatever, then I'm like, okay, I can – I'll Not buy that, it. I'll buy it. Whatever. It's horseshit. Sure. I'll buy whatever supernatural thing you set up as long as you just follow the rules you set up for it. Um 
So I, I, yeah. So that would actually make more sense to me, I think, at this point, if it was magical. Uh, also, I'm mad at him. At one point, he goes to get the cape, and it's just like in a locker. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah. There's no lock. It's just sitting somewhere, barely like hidden. It just, I, it might as well have said cape <laughs> on the outside of the fucking locker. I'm like, put it, you know, this guy's coming for the goddamn cape. I know, hide it or something. It, it, it just really annoyed me. Uh, um, Malini at one point is getting ready for the show, and he's like, all right, the show must go on. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, we see there's a shot of, there's like a mirror on his desk, and in the mirror, you see Gregor's face like outside of the window. There's this like breeze or whatever, and he's like, oh, Gregor. But he doesn't see his face. He just knows he's like, he can sense him or whatever, which fine. You right. have instincts. But like, why didn't he see him? That, the reflection is of a full window it's a in the mirror you see just like a window you would see in a room and this man is just standing he's not peeking around a corner his whole face is there and the reflection would be facing max Molini at the time so <laughs> they should just be looking at each other <laughs> that annoyed me <laughs> um, we get the wrap up he goes to see his kid <laughs> they are four feet apart from each other on his goddamn roof his kid is. This is killing you. Is every Halloween do <laughs> you just lose your dad? Every <laughs> Halloween you're just like I have no idea. My dad goes away every ho- October thirty first. The, the fucking it's your dad. It just it, well, it drives me nuts. It, I, it's it is the one thing I can't like get over because they don't e- do the decency of having him be in a shadow yeah. or altering his voice or no. having a full face mask. Anything except for. <clears throat> A fucking Ronald, uh, a Hamburglar costume, <laughs> two feet from your goddamn kid. He can smell you. He should know. You. It just, <laughs> it's very annoying. <laughs> but we see also him. He's reading the Cape comic, and the kids reading the Cape comic at the same time. And a fucking, uh, fucking, uh, what's that goddamn mouse? <laughs> uh, the somewhere out there, the fucking Disney thing with the mouse, and they're reading under somewhere. Oh. Out out there. Yeah. It's a very somewhere out there moment yeah. where they're both doing the same thing at the same time. I feel like he's only reading the same issue of that goddamn comic book <laughs> over and over, which I find weird. The kid is hung. I find it weird that the cape reads the cape in his spare time. Like, I found that a little odd. <laughs> I also you... found it odd that they both read it out loud to themselves. <laughs> That's an odd way to read a... anything, really. Um, also, the kid has managed to move the hefty, uh, hefty bag, the heavy bag that his father worked out on up to the roof uh, because he's on the roof, like, throwing punches and kicks, getting ready to fight this bully. That thing weighs more than that kid does. Oh, my God. He carried out a fire escape, as far as I can tell. (laughs) Fucking impressive feat. Think about that. Um, That's kind of the episode. He shows up. He's like, yeah, you got to, you know, do the right thing. There's some dumb line that the cape always says of, like, one fight. It's something. What is it? It's one one man, one fight, one right. Yes, something which, like that. Not not good. Does I don't under, I don't get it. One right. What, what, is what that? does that mean? Also, what do you mean one man, one fight? Nothing. That doesn't mean. Also, doesn't mean anything. I don't know what the like truth, justice, and the American way of that is. Like that doesn't. <laughs> I don't get the context. Um, <laughs> and that's episode three. Episode four. I got very excited because it's called Scales, which means Scales is back. Scales and is great. Scales is great. He has the best. See all Vinnie these Jones. All these great. dumb lines that there are a lot of. He makes work. Yeah. At one point, he shows up because the cape is. We'll get to it, but he's like the cape is calling him for a meeting or whatever, and he's like, "You interrupted lasagna night, and I like lasagna." That's a stupid line, but when he delivers it, right. it's like fucking funny and cool. I'll give you an example of someone who delivers a line that is not good. Uh, the first thing we see is. The, uh, so the episode opens, and Scales is meeting with somebody from ARC, and it's supposed to be Fleming, but Fleming hasn't shown up, and he's a little pissed, and the guy hasn't said anything. The very first line of the episode is this cop, and he goes, man, I love Brazil nuts. You don't hear much about them, but they really reflect well on Brazil. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, is that supposed to be, like, uh, punchy fucking Quentin Tarantino-esque dialogue or something? Because it doesn't work. <laughs> Although I feel like if uh, if it was Tarantino, he would use the other term for <laughs> for Brazil nuts. Uh, uh, that's going to be a deep cut. You can Google it. I don't know if I can say it on the podcast. Um, I never knew that till I was an adult. Okay, so uh, there's a very racist uh, slang for uh, what Brazil nuts are. Maybe the most racist of all the things. 
Uh-huh. It's the most racist nut. Uh, I, mean, I can't think of another term. food. Even eggplant, like the like they, the Italians say muli yeah, 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 eggplant yeah. isn't nearly as racist as. Uh, well, I can say it. Nigger toes. They say <laughs> it's called uh, N word toes because they look. I guess they look like black people toes. They don't. They look. They're very pointy. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a very racist term for Brazil nuts. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry, we got off on a tangent. Um, oh, the, Tar- the Tarantino way of working that in. Was so, fucking brilliant. so Scales, uh, basically Ark tells him, like, look, uh, we want half of your – Scales is, like, running the docks and running scams and, uh, ex- like, uh, working the union and protection rackets and shit. And uh, Ark wants half of his profits. But he's already giving half to Chess, which is a fucking the same dude. So the guy's double dipping and robbing him twice. But Scales doesn't know – that they're the same person. Yet. Uh, so that's going to set up Scales versus Fleming, which I think is kind of fun and pay, pays off fairly well. Uh, uh, the other part of this, the B story, I guess there's B and C in this episode, is that it's Tripp's birthday. It's Vince Faraday's kid's birthday. And I don't care <laughs> at all. So at one point, Orwell goes, ah, yeah, birthday's overrated. And I'm like, yeah. And then Vince is like, well, not if you're Ted. And I'm like, okay, I kind of get you. But like, there's too many flashbacks in this episode. There's a lot, yes. They keep, and I've written them Boring. multiple times. These flashbacks suck multiple times because they're just literally like it's uh, him showing up at fucking career day for his kid in his cop uniform, which I was annoyed by because they go, this is Detective Vincent Faraday, but he's in a cop uniform. Right, and I'm like, yeah. that's not how detectives dress. Um, so it seems like a giant error. Sure. Uh, what also is happening is that the. So basically, there's going to be a train with a costume party with all the rich and powerful people in the city on it. Some sort of fundraiser, like the casino night fundraiser or whatever. Yeah, can for we talk about something? I don't know what they're raising the money for. Unclear. The other thing, yeah. So they set this thing up as the train. They all board this train and they go. And it, yeah, it's sort of like set up like this would be like a pleasure cruise or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. Where and you it's, go, everybody's in and costume. Then, it's heroes and villains is the theme. And you and it, the pl- pleasure cruise would like come back. They just yes. get on a train and just go. They just go straight. They never. They're show going it to Albuquerque or something. <laughs> Trains don't go in a circle. <laughs> yeah, like, it's not because it, it's not like the subway. You know what I mean? It's right, not like no. the local transportation. They're it's on Amtrak a... type <laughs> shit, and they're just hours. I mean, yeah, they're yeah, hundreds yeah. of miles away. No one knows. Anyway, was, that, that was, bothered me I profoundly. Under, understandable. Um, so that's happening. Vince is trying to turn scales against Fleming. Because he's he's got somebody on the inside that he has recording like conversations with Scales, yeah, yeah. right? Because he said he goes to the one guy and the guy's like uh, Scales just puts his driver in a hospital for making a ride on red, so the price of these recordings is going to go up or whatever. Right. Um, and he has like a thumb drive, so I guess he's wearing a wire to these meets. So he's trying to turn Fleming against Scales. Uh, meanwhile, the Carnival of Crime is going to rob the. The fundraiser just by train, coincidence. just by coincidence, but also like, good. They're the carnival of crime. I was getting annoyed. Like they shouldn't turn good right away. We meet them, and they're okay with yeah, him yeah. because he helps them rob a bunch of banks. Yeah, but then after that, they don't. He doesn't help them do any more crime. So then, why do Which they is give a probably shit? Probably why they didn't make it clear what this fundraiser was for. Because otherwise, when it's Counting all this money at the end, I'm like, that was for AIDS research. Like, <laughs> like that is not a good thing. Like, well, they bad. even they do. I mean, I will give the show this. Uh, there is a confrontation at one point when he's counting that money. Uh, Vincent shows up and he's like, "Look, you know, you're a criminal. I'm trying to be a good guy here. Like, what do you want the cape to be?" And in more poorly written double speak, he's like, "Doesn't matter what I want the cape to be. It's what do you want them? No one gives a shit." Uh, but Vincent Faraday says to him, like, at su- at some point, what you believe in and what I believe in is going to put us on the on either side of a loaded gun. And right. Max is like, well, let's just enjoy our time until that happens. Yeah. But like, I kind of like that they're like, yeah, that get- letting them go back to being criminals because that's what they are. Max is like a little conflicted, but not really. He's like, he has a moment when Vince leaves where he goes like, he's counting money, and he goes like. <sighs> like just that's that's supposed to be right. our thing of whatever, but like yeah, they are still the carnival of crime. They should still be doing stuff. So. They're not just they've just been be, they've just been the carnival for the last like two episodes. So right, yeah, yeah. I like them getting back. Yeah, in the I crime. agree. I want them to bring that raccoon back. Honestly, maybe. 
<laughs> I'd like to see him factor in more. Um, so those are all kind of kind of come. All these storylines are going to kind of come together on this train. Well, the B storyline with the birthday is that. Oh yeah. Oh, this is who gives a shit. But his uh, <laughs> her. So the mom's stuck in traffic. She's supposed to be meeting her boss at her place to discuss some trial or whatever. But he can't. She can't get there because she's stuck in traffic with this ice cream cake. And she's like, so, hey, by the way, Trip is there, and he's really conscious. He won't let strangers in. Uh, he won't answer the door for strangers because his father in the flashbacks like, never answer the door for strangers. Also, he tells the kids what kind of gun he has. I don't know, weird. Oh, they, yeah, it's yeah. It's like yeah. in that bring your dad to work day thing, he's like, the kids are like, oh, what kind of gun is that? And he's like, it's a Kimber semi-auto, blah, blah, blah. And like, they don't, one, they don't know what that means. And two, why did you bring your gun to this fucking Yeah, way, thing? Too, way too excited to tell the kids about it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows it's going to make him seem badass. But he tells them there, like, make sure you don't answer your door for strangers or whatever, so the kid's never going to let a stranger in. And he shows up, but the mom's phone dies before she can make the call. Oh, is that what it That's was? That's what it, it was. Died. Yeah, so she says to him, I like, thought she was getting another call, and uh-huh. that just wasn't addressed. <laughs> no, okay, no, no. Okay, all right, that makes she, more yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, her phone. So she's like, I'm going to have to call him, Trip first, let him know we'll let you in. But the phone dies, so she can't. So now also, he shows up. Sidebar. Please. As someone who has had to do logistics of this type of uh, if you got a commute, mm. you get the ice cream cake at the end, end of the commute. Yeah. You don't get it at your office. <laughs> you get it at a place near the destination. I agree. I also – now <laughs> clearly why – now I know why they did it, but it also doesn't make sense. She's driving around with that ice cream cake box open. Now they clearly did that so that we could see the birthday cake and be like, oh, she's got this birthday cake. Yeah. But why is she tasting it? What like in the in the oh, world yeah, yeah. of the show? Why is she just driving around with the top of the cake box off? <laughs> I get it, so we can see the icing, but like <laughs> it's just cheesy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so that story, what's happening? He's like, well, you can't come in, so he's got to he's got to wait out in the hallway, and they're having like talks through the door or whatever. And, he says so the kid's like at one point he goes so how if you're you're a defense attorney like if somebody's innocent but they think they're guilty but people think they're guilty and it looks like they're guilty how do you prove they're not guilty and he's like you don't have to in this country you have the presumed innocence and they can't take that away from you and I'm like well you should as an adult you should know what that kid's talking about you know he's talking about his dad and you also know that's not what's happening right now to him, right? So you're not, you haven't yeah. given him any actual information yeah, yeah, because, yeah. like, his dad's dead as far as he knows. Yeah. Um, so that's happening. And we're getting a bunch of this bullshit conversation between them in the hallway. But also, like, the kid's 100% right. Everything that he says to prove he should let him in is what – they tell kids, strangers will tell you to prove you should let them out. Like, Every yeah, one exactly. of them. I was like, thinking the same he thing. He literally is just like, oh, I'm a friend your of your mom. mom. I was just talking to your mom. in the office. She just told me to let you tell the you kids to let me are, Oh, in. I'm double fucking <laughs> like, this Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. He goes, oh, by the way, I know it's uh, your birthday. Yeah. It's like, kids like, you could have fucking Googled me. And he just locks the door again. And I'm like, I don't know why you're on Google, kid, but whatever. Uh, um, so we get on the train. And what I very much enjoyed is that Adam Schiff is back. And he's dressed up like the cape. By the way, I, is that actor's name Robert Schiff? I think because, it's Adam Schiff. Am I got Adam Schiff is the guy from Law & Order. Oh, am I even saying Adam, Adam Schiff? Adam Schiff. You can't get 12 people to agree on a pizza. Make is a deal, Jack. Robert Schiff? Which one's... Richard Schiff. Richard Schiff. Richard right. Schiff is his name, I'm pretty sure. Maybe? Nope. This guy was in... What the fuck is his name? I'm, man, I've got the wrong dude this whole time. What is, that's going to drive me nuts. I'll look it up. Um, but it is Schiff because I watched the opening credits. So I'm like, oh, it's something. It it's is Richard. Schiff. It is Richard Schiff, okay. not Adam Schiff. I've been fucking that up for multiple episodes. I apologize. But he's back, and I le- I very much got a kick out of the fact that so everyone's supposed to drop as heroes and villains, and he's dressed up like the cape. And I thought that was very funny. Like him getting it to have cute. this like kind of fanboy moment. Yeah, and he's got this little plan. This is funny. His stupid little like tin foil stick. That <laughs> I don't know why he has that because the cape doesn't have one of. The, he doesn't have like a just silver a stick. stick. Yeah, yeah, I did like the cape going. Oh hey, I like the yeah. the utility belt. He's like, oh nice, thanks. It's Velcro. Like I like that. I was like, this is fun yeah these this show should have levity like that in it and that worked for me um also on the train is scales well we missed one part which i enjoyed as well which is uh so after uh 
he makes uh, the cape makes somebody one of the scales henchmen call him tell him to come to this warehouse he's there waiting and he explains to him like look you're getting fucked over by Fleming because Fleming is chess and here's how I can prove he's chess or whatever right. and uh, scales then so Fleming is at some like uh, I think it's like the PR event for this train ride uh, and all the reporters around and Scales shows yeah. up there and he's like Mr. Fleming and he shakes his hand and he's like what the fuck are you doing in public and he's like look you keep shaking my he's like I know your chest keep shaking my hand or the, all these reporters are going to know your chest as well uh, and then that's how he kind of bullies his way onto this train and I like very much that his move is to get on the train he's like well I can get around all these rich people and I'll start you know making deals with these rich people <laughs> and they're all like no you criminal like he goes up to the mayor and he's like hey by the way i could sell you stolen metal or whatever well, no yeah. taxes that's what that's what was so funny his master plan on this train is to bully people into business deals yeah. he's yeah. basically a contractor it's like oh, i yeah. can get gravel at half the price yeah. you pay for it yeah like, but also criminal clearly illegal he, yeah. he tells the mayor i can get you that at half price and the best part is no taxes and the mayor's like, I collect the taxes. Like, that's right. my city's <laughs> yeah. revenue. Like, he's just the – I like that Scales is a big, dumb oaf. And I also like that the, the mayor's costume is the mayor. <laughs> like, sort of like a cartoonish, like, old-timey mayor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ed Fleming is the is a, a sheriff, but like a all-white suit sheriff from like an old like looks Roy so. Rogers thing. Uh, um also then – so like I do like – so so the cape kind of enlists uh, Richard Schiff into helping him like stop the carnival of crime or whatever. And he's telling him to like you know, keep an eye out for a little guy with a 38, which is funny. <laughs> um, they – Also on the train is Orwell, by the way. Orwell and, is on the train. In a Lone in, Ranger m- Well, mask. she's got a weird mask with a feather on it that's hiding a microphone and a camera. And couldn't be more obviously hiding a camera because she keeps having to like kind of turn her head <laughs> towards what she wants to film. It's just real stupid. Um, and she sees Fleming and yells at him at one point. And I think – I don't know if we're supposed to know. So she's wearing a mask. So in the internal logic of the show, she is unrecognizable, right? Right. But exactly. <laughs> But he, Fleming, when she yells at him, has a moment of like, is that my – right? Doesn't she kind of re- – he kind of reacts like, is that – Yeah, he's got he's some sort for- of flash of recognition. Yeah, 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 sort yeah. Of, You don't know how on what level he's – But yeah, she's like – you know, she confronts him in front of everybody about like – he's giving a speech about how, how Ark is so good for the city. And she's like, are you kidding me? You just rock up people and it's fascism yeah, and blah, right, blah, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. There is a struggle. So – Scales gets tired of being blown off by the mayor because the mayor's like, I'm not going to just discuss crime with you on this fucking train. <laughs> uh, and he eventually pulls a gun and he's like, well, fuck it then. I'm just going to rob this train, which I thought was also fun. <laughs> um, so now you got two people trying to rob this train and uh, the carnival of crime. <laughs> this I fucking loved. So uh, he shows up. They're like get, taking the money out of the back and Scales is like, hey, get the hell away from my money. He doesn't see Maxim leaning behind him, puts the gun on him, and he's like, hey, the last time, you know, you shot me the last time I met you. He's way too long of a speech that I enjoyed where he's like, I'm allergic to anesthesia, and the only thing the surgeon gave me was a rag soaked in cognac. I don't know how that would even help, but sure. Wouldn't you just drink the cognac, I <laughs> yeah. guess? Were you in the Civil War? <laughs> Is that when this was? Yeah. Uh, uh, you had a belt to bite down on. <laughs> so uh, he's like, they things put him in the cage and uh he's like nobody puts me in a cage and then we get this flashback of scales yeah. i kind of like this part i, I this like cool. it i want more back i want more scales back so story. scales i mean he has a di- uh, i guess it's a it's congenital sort of con- condition where he has like leathery scaly skin he looks like a lizard he looks like a lizard he looks like a human with lizard skin right yeah and uh <laughs> We see his flashback is that when he was a kid, he was like forced into a circus <laughs> sideshow <laughs> and just taunted and locked in a cage. And I, and like a little person was like, oh, you want some cake? No cake for you, you fucking lizard or whatever. <laughs> like just being real shitty to him. So he said so, – so he's like he's like mad about getting put in a cage, which I enjoyed. Uh, and <laughs> – I, also, how he his, dealt with it. How he good. dealt with it is so weird. He just starts headbutting one singular bar very of calmly. the cage. Very calmly. One, Bang. 
bang. Yeah, yeah. Just over and over. And uh, he goes, like, nobody puts me in a cage and starts headbutting it. And I do like Max Molina's response, which is like, uh, I believe him. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, this guy, we've, we've pissed him off. Uh, so they get the money and leave. And somehow, and I don't understand the physics, him, we're led to believe he's been headbutting it for maybe five minutes, right? Six minutes kind of straight because it cuts away from him uh, to some other shit that's happening with the cape, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, and it cuts back, and he is uh, still headbutting the thing. So ostensibly, he's just been headbutting this one bar for, you know, five minutes or so. And then he stops, and he steps back, and he's got, like, blood pouring mm-hmm. on his forehead or whatever. And the whole cage door just falls <laughs> over, like, at the hinges. I don't understand how headbutting He's clearly done one this bo- before. He knows what he's doing. He's doing it very calmly. Oh, I like to think it just hasn't been locked the whole time, and he's dumb. <laughs> Like, because I don't understand how headbutting one bar would make this door fall off, but that's what happened. Uh, meanwhile, the Carnival of Crime has dis like has like released the caboose with all the money on it, so they can make their escape. And somehow, doing that has fucked up the brakes on the train, so now the train's a runaway train. I don't know how trains work, but the sure mechanical like that. thing that they set up there made no sense. Absolutely no sense. And how they had to fix it. Well, they have to cut the brake line, which is not how every other thing. Like <laughs> yeah, any, it's the reverse. It's the reverse. You cut the brake lines, the brakes don't work. That's always the thing in real, right? You cut somebody's brake lines on the car, then they drive off a cliff because they're going too fast. <laughs> this is, this is, with trains, it's way different. <laughs> apparently. If you want to stop a train, you have to cut the brake line. Apparently. I didn't even think about Which that. Which is underneath the train. Uh, yeah. A very inconvenient. <laughs> a very inconvenient place for that. Uh, but for some reason, that is a two-man job, and that means that Fleming and the Cape have to work together they have to, to team stop up the train. To stop Otherwise, their, they're all going to they're all going to die. I don't know why it has to be Fleming when there are several other men on that train. He says he's a mechanical engineer. All he does is stab a thing. <laughs> he does. I guess he might be a mechanical engineer, but literally, what he does when he gets underneath the train is a right. dr- a, a drop a flashlight and <laughs> right. b stab a hose i don't think you need a degree to do that i guess he i mean i guess they like he knew, would know which, which ones to yeah the guy already told him it's the one right by the wheel like i don't know i thought that was like but whatever it's fine they you have to like right, we're set up that our enemies have to work together right. it's fine uh basically the cape uses the cape to lower him down underneath and hold him up so that he can cut this lot this line while he's there he's like uh, he's like, you know, tell me who you are or I won't cut the thing or whatever. And it's like, well, you're going to cut the thing because you also don't want to die, stupid. Right. Um, and also, you fucking know who he is. <laughs> it's just infuriating. They say that he saves the day. He pulls him out of the, you know, he, he cuts the thing. It stops the train. I don't know what happens. Now that. they're just 400 miles from home. Who knows where they are and... <laughs> They come up, there's like a confrontation. He's like, oh man, well played. Fleming says, like, well played. He's like, you think this is a game? Right. Yeah, kind of, I yeah. guess. Like, I, you, you guys are all wearing costumes. Right yeah. now. <laughs> that guy's yeah, dressed yeah, like yeah. a cowboy. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's sort of a game, dude. Yeah, it's, it's kind of game like. Um, I'm not sure where the cape goes at that point, because at that point, the train is just full of Fleming and a shit ton of armed arc security. And I don't remember him doing the smoke bomby thing. So, yeah. like. I don't know how he got away. I, that's kind of it, right? Well, no, yeah. That we get that. There's that. Then there's the con- there's the uh, confrontation with him and Max, where he's like, you know, I'm a good guy. You guys are criminals and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think Scales eats that guy at the end. At the end, <laughs> we see like Scales gets out of the cage, and we see the cop, the Brazil nuts cop from the beginning, who was like real shitty to it, like real like rude to him in the beginning. And he's like, I remember you. And then it's like a fast go down with like a big oh, wide open yeah, yeah. mouth. And I'm like, did he eat that guy? <laughs> yeah. Like, is he actually a monster? I don't – which I'd be I, fine with. Like, sure. Make him a supervillain. Huh? Uh, the other thing I uh, I liked is like, well, you know, Fleming is British and, and then this guy's they did play off a little like class war between those mm-hmm. two because Fleming's very upper crust. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. You know, he says something like, I'm an East End boy. Yeah, yeah. He said, I what, grew up with nothing. What he, makes you hungry. What he says specifically is, I'm a dock worker with low blood sugar. That's what it does. Oh, that line right. he says for some reason. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's like, you know, I grew up with nothing, but now I can buy and sell you or whatever, which is fine. Um, 
uh, eventually the mom gets home and lets the guy in after he's given the kids give him a fruit roll up at one point. Also, this is hours that he's hours, there. Hours. I'm like, go, leave, go to a coffee shop. Right, why are you, find why a are you waiting shop in a hallway? Yeah, he just needs to do work, and that's what he's doing while he's sitting in this hallway. Yeah, being uncomfortable, which he says repeatedly. Yeah. Um, but the mom shows up, and he's like, uh, and the kid's like, hey, Trevor, you want some birthday milkshake? Because the cake's melted or whatever. And I guess now they've bonded. Yeah. So I, I guess maybe they're we're going sort to of like they're gonna try to play a little like. The replacement of the dad. dad and, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I liked both of these episodes. I liked the train episode even more just because of how, like, super cartoony everything in yeah. it is. Like, the the chess, uh, the uh, scales flashback. I want more scales, obviously. Scales so. is great. I um, mean, the whole set piece of that was very, like, uh, uh, Joel Schumacher era Batman. Yeah, 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 stuff. yeah. Very and much were, so. Very Penguin-esque kind yeah. of bad guys, for sure. Uh, anything you want to plug? Uh, I don't think I have anything to plug right now. I do still the Showtime show with a cartoon, our cartoon president still airing. Who what, who do you voice on that? Uh, mainly Mitt Romney, but nice. a few other little ones. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I am throwing a benefit Ooh, that's right. next week. If you're in Austin, Texas, next Wednesday, 529, we'll, uh, we are, my uh, partner and I, Maris Clegg, are having a benefit. At Barracuda for the Yellowhammer Fund. If you're not aware, they're an organization that helps women in Alabama get access to the three remaining abortion clinics in that state. With the state of the country and its attack on fucking women's reproductive freedom, it's a good time to raise some money for them. So there's going to be a bunch of comics. Uh, Leah Sampson, Jasmine Ellis, uh, Christina Parrish, uh, Mama Said, Roxy Castillo, a uh, bunch of this music and DJs. We're going to have a crazy raffles, all kinds of cool shit going. So uh, be on the lookout. That, uh, I'll be posting about that soon, but that'll be Wednesday the 29th. Uh, otherwise, keep an eye out on the website. If you like the show, rate, review, subscribe, tell your friends to do the same. And we will be back next week with more of The Cape.